I'm John Davis and we've got a cotton picking good story for you in the field. What? It's funny because it's literal. <laughs> oh, come on, it's eight o'clock in the morning. What do you expect? Hey, where are you going? Now, I know we started this show out in the field and we're gonna go back there. But to really understand this story, you gotta start in the lab. I'm here today with Dr. Hong Zhang. He is a professor of biology here at Texas Tech. How are you today? Very good. Now, I understand that when you wanna grow a crop of cotton out here in West Texas, mm -hmm. you have to deal with salt, you have to deal with drought, and you have to deal with heat. Yeah. Those those are the three things that are rooting against you if you're a farmer. Yes. But you're trying to figure out a way to tilt the favor back to the farmer genetically. Tell me a little bit about that. So we want to make a cotton very tolerant to high temperature and to water deficit. So those are the major you know, limiting factors for agricultural production in this part of the world. So we want to make cotton extremely tolerant to high temperature and uh, drought and perhaps uh, to some type of salt. So we want to introduce uh, good genes into cotton. That's why we are working with the transgenic cotton. So how do you get the genetic information from that plant into the cotton over there? What we do is basically we isolate a gene from these plants. This is a Raphidopsis. It's a model plant, okay. basic plant biology research. It's very easy to work with the Raphidopsis. We isolate this gene, put this gene into a bacteria. Okay. Basically, what we do is infect this little segment with agrobacteria. Okay. So the agrobacteria will try to deliver the gene that we put into those agrobacteria, into those, uh, those uh, plant cell. Okay. If a particular hypercolloid cell is transformed. They got from, infected. Yes, got infected. Okay. So those cells will become antibiotics resistant because the media here contains uh, uh, antibiotics that will kill wild type cells. Only those cotton cells received the gene from agrobacteria will be able to survive. We then smash these colors into a small powdered you know, mass. We then incubate those uh, little uh, powdered uh, uh, colors in a okay. liquid culture. This way, we are trying to make those uh, transform the cell to regain its uh, uh, ability to grow into a, a young plant, a new plant. Okay. So each single transform cell will be able to generate a, a little embryo. This embryo will grow into a tiny plant. So what's the next step after this part? Well, the next step is to the growth chamber to see those little young transgenic plants look like. And after that, we move those plants into the greenhouse okay. and to get seeds. And then we are gonna conduct a lot of physiologic experiment in greenhouse. And because in greenhouse, we can control the salt, drought. In the growth chamber, we can control temperature. So we can perform all types of multi-stress experiments. But after all those you know, laboratory experiments are done, then we have to go to the real world go to the farm oh, okay. and to see how our plants perform in real world. So I'll take you to the farm as well oh. after we finish all of these. Perfect, well let's go see the growth room then. Okay, let's go. All right. So this is where the test tube babies grow into yes. baby plants? Yes. All right. You see, the, the embryo that we saw upstairs in the lab, tiny, tiny embryo, we transfer those tiny embryo into this jar okay. to regenerate plants. You can see here, a shoot already started. Oh yeah, a little leaf. Yeah, yeah it's germinated. And, uh, but they don't have the root yet. Okay. So we still have to induce the root development. Here you can oh, see, yeah. this is a tiny plant with a root and a leaf and a little stem. It's all complete, yeah. Yes, it's a little plant now, but plant like this, you cannot just move them into the soil oh. because the jar, inside the jar, the moisture is very high. Uh -huh. Plants are adapted to these high moisture conditions. So we have to give them some time to transition themselves into a real air you know, environment. Oh, so right. what we do is we transplant these 
needle plant out of this jar into a pot, into a pot like this. So after we put this into this little little pot, we cover with saran wrap to maintain the moisture okay. so that those little plants can adapt itself to the reduced moisture conditions. After this stage, we can move that into greenhouse. So these, that's the point in time where you're looking to see, does this plant have the kind of gene expression that I'm looking for? Correct. Well, why don't we go take a look at the greenhouse? Okay, let's go. Okay, follow you. All right. That this is good. our greenhouse. Okay. It's very pretty. Yes. Oh, thank you. Sure. Ah, okay. John, this is the greenhouse where we currently conducting some physiologic experiment. For example, on these benches, that's where we just finished a salt tolerance okay. test. Salt plus drought, you know, two stress coming together, hitting plants. And we just finished that experiment, we got great data. Those plants are dying now because we already finished the experiment. Okay. You can see that most of those plants are severely damaged because of these stresses. So this is like the final dress, and when we go out into the field, that's opening night. You either sink or swim right yes, there. Yes, correct. We are getting great positive results from here. That it will give us high confidence it's going to work in the field. Well, why don't we go out to this field and see how they're growing in the real world? So where are we, Dr. Zhang? Uh, what, what are we doing here? Oh, this is a very small scale experiment. Okay. After this, we're gonna move it to a larger scale. Here, it's just a small, but later, at later step, we're gonna move that into bigger acres land and then after that even bigger and uh, scale before we release this to the environment. I see. About how long does it take to go from the lab into full-scale production where farmers and can, can buy the seeds? Oh, uh, the research part, uh, you know, it takes about uh, between two to three years to get this far. Okay. And we probably need to do three more years of uh, field work. And if everything goes, uh, you know, as expected, uh, then we have to get uh, approval from the federal government. Uh, it takes between six to eight years, the, the our actual product to get to the, can get to the market. Okay, cool. Well, I guess I'm ready to get to work. Okay, let me introduce you to my graduate students. Uh, these are their PhD projects. Let me introduce you our guest here, John. Good morning. Hi. I'm, I'm John. Nice Hi, to meet John. you. Nice to meet nice you. Meet you. <laughs> Thanks for having me in your field today. Sure. So you guys are responsible for the genetic changes in these plants, yeah, huh? Yes, we are. All right. So how does this crop look this year? Is it what you were expecting? Is it better? Is it worse? No, they're looking good. This is the irrigated side, so they're going to be a lot bigger, and you see the bowl number is going to be a lot higher than on the drought side. Okay. So on the drought, we call it the drought side. It's really a rain-fed plot. Okay. So they don't receive any irrigation besides the rainfall that we receive each summer. Dr. Zhang said, I'm going to help you guys pick cotton. Is there a... I've never done that before, so is there a <laughs> method to that? We are hand picking. It's not uh, very like uh, scientific. scientific. <laughs> yeah, you just, just. But the number of bulls is important because we want to measure and we want to have the statistics of the bull number and uh, at the end the yield of the plants. Okay, so. We've already blocked out our plants okay. into replicates. Okay. So you can see from the pink tags, the from beginning to end, we have them labeled. Okay. So we have already put our bags out. Okay. And have them set up by our, we call them plot D instead of replicate one, two, three. Okay. It doesn't really matter on okay. the labeling. So we'll count the plant number within this one section because this is our first time to harvest this plot. Okay. So you can come down to the soil level and count the number of plants. Okay. Basically, write it on the bag. And then from this whole section, you'll start pulling all the bowls. Okay. You just pull them out by oh, hand. How about that? Just yank them? Just yank them and count them. Okay, so that's... So that's number three. Number three. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you go through and count the whole plot. And okay. And you'll write how many bowls on the bag. Okay, well, I can do that for you guys. So, and I, I just go from here 
to, to here. here. That's yes. that. That's, that's that one plot meter. Here. Yeah, one yes. meter plot. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks. I'll get mm -hmm. to it. For each part. Man, this takes a little while to do by hand, huh? Yeah. And I would hate to make a living doing this by hand. Now, um, after you harvest this cotton, are you guys going to also look at the quality and yes. the um, and weigh the amount and all that sort of yes. thing? Okay. We, we weigh them first. Okay. Then we'll take samples from each bag and uh, analyze the fiber. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with you. You're Try. fast. <laughs> I, c I counted 33, what did you get? I got 45, oh, we have a few more here. Uh, actually, 48. <laughs> 48 and 35? <laughs> I like to do it the long way. 83, that's pretty good, yeah? I'm done. 39? Yeah, 46. 39 and 46 is... 39 and 46... 85. Is 85. All right. I'll take your word for you. You're the scientist. All right. 85 bowls. So what did we learn? Well, water is becoming an ever more precious commodity, not only here on the South Plains, but also all over the world. Now, genetic modification of crops such as this cotton here may hold the key to holding on to that precious resource for a lot longer. For In the Field, I'm John Davis. Well, then you come up with an intro, man. See, it's not so easy, is it? Where we smooth out.